let's model the thinking that you should be going through when you're looking to construct a confidence interval. So here's an example. In a recent survey of 2,221 Americans, 1,666 indicated they turn off lights, televisions, and other appliances when not in use. So here we're asking, do you turn off lights, television, and other appliances when not in use or not? And so you can see here that the variable of interest is a qualitative variable that has two possible outcomes. So right. first and foremost, the variable of interest is whether you turn off lights, TV, or other appliances when not in use or not. So this is qualitative with two possible outcomes, right? You either have the characteristic that you're turning these things off or you don't. Because it's qualitative with two possible outcomes, it makes sense to construct a confidence interval for a proportion. You follow that logic? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do here is make sure that I can actually construct this confidence interval. So first and foremost, I need to compute P hat, my sample proportion, which is the number of individuals that have the characteristic 1,666 divided by the number of individuals in the study in my sample. So I just take 1666 divided by 2221 and I'm getting 0 0.750. So it's X over N, right? X over N, correct. Okay. Now to construct a confidence interval for a proportion, we just mentioned this, N times P hat times one minus P hat has to be at least 10. So we have 2,221 2, times 0 0.750 times one minus 0 0.750. Let's see what we get. 416.4, which is certainly at least 10. And then the other requirement is that the sample size can be no more than 5% of the population size. Here, our population of interest is all adult Americans. That would be Americans 18 years of age or older. Well, there's about 200 million adult Americans in this country. So 2,221 is most definitely less than 5% of 200 million. And so, that requirement of independence is satisfied. So now that means we can go ahead and construct a confidence interval for a proportion. We're gonna be using StatCrunch to do that, of course. And to do that, you go stat, proportion stats, one sample. And then it always asks with data or with summary this particular problem has summarized data, the 1,666 out of 2,221. If this was raw data, we'd literally have a column of yeses and nos in, in a StatCrunch spreadsheet. So you'd have 2,221 rows, some 1,666 of those rows would be yeses, and the remaining would be nos. And so if you had that, you'd say with, with data. So we go off to StatCrunch, so we go stat, proportion stats, one sample, and we have summarized data. It was 1,666 individuals that have the characteristic, 2,221 in our, in our sample, and we wanted to construct a 95% confidence interval. So you check the confidence interval radio button and leave the level at 0.95. Click compute. And there's your results. And so we can see here that the, 
the lower bound on the confidence interval is 0.732 and the upper bound is 0.768. So we would say something like we are 95% confident the proportion of adult Americans who turn off lights, televisions, or other appliances when not in use is between 0 0.732 and 0 0.768. And so that, it's a pretty narrow interval. It's narrow, I think, primarily because the size of your, your sample is, is quite large, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, we mentioned on Wednesday that the typical sample size from Gallup is around 1,000 to 1,100 individuals. And so this one is definitely a lot bigger than, than that, or double it, really, right? And so that's why you have a narrower interval. The other thing make sure you're aware of is what 95% represents in a 95% confidence interval. We emphasized this a lot last week that the 95% means that if I conducted this survey many, many different times, I would expect 95% of the corresponding intervals to capture the unknown parameter and 5% to miss. We don't know whether this particular interval is one of those 5% that miss or one of those 95% that captures. And that's why we say we're 95% confident. All right. And for the explanation for that, for proportion stats, you would obviously say the proportion of la di di da, but if we're right. doing the student's t interval, you would change that for the mean? Yeah, so let's segue into this problem then. So this data represents the pitch speed in miles per hour of a random sample of 12 sliders thrown by uh, Jake Arrieta, who used to pitch for the, for the Cubs. And so we have 12 different uh, observations in the data set. Here, what's the, what's the variable of interest? I'll let you answer that. Pitch speed? Yep. Is that quantitative or qualitative? Quantitative. Yep, that's a quantitative so variable. Because you, you, you measure it. Right. In fact, we could go further and say it's a continuous random variable if we wanted to, right? Yeah. And so we're interested in the typical pitch speed of an Arietta slider. And so what type of confidence interval would make sense? What parameter are we trying to estimate? Oh, so oh. We're, for this one's gonna be the mean. Yep, this one's the mean because we're interested in typical pitch speed, we want to estimate the population mean. Right, so the variable is quantitative, so that rules out proportion right out of the gate. I mean, but just because it's quantitative doesn't mean that this is what we're estimating, right? Even though we didn't cover it, for example, you could wanna estimate the population standard deviation for some reason. Right? Maybe you were wondering, hey, it, how consistent is the speed of the, of the pitch? Right? In baseball, in fact, you want your pitch speeds to be less consistent rather than more to, if you want to be an effective pitcher. Right. Because you want sure. the, the phrase you use is keeping the hitters off balance. Right? Uh -huh. And so uh, you might want to say, hey, is Jake Arrieta's slider too consistent? something like that, that would mean um, I want to estimate the standard deviation, okay? So you want to be mindful of that. And so now it says verify the models are satisfied, uh, model requirements are satisfied. So students T distribution, there were two model requirements. First, because the sample size is small, we need pitch speed to be approximately 
normal. This is verified using a normal probability plot. And then... Is that the QQ plot? That's the QQ plot in, in Stack Crunch. The data may not have outliers either. And to do that, we're going to draw a box plot. So what we have to do, what I have to do is take this data and load it into a Stack Crunch. As you know, in the MyLab, you'll be able to just click that button to open the, the Stack Crunch spreadsheet. So let me just shrink this down here and we'll call this variable speed. 88.09, and 89. So we go to draw the normal probability plot. We go to graph QQ plot is what it's called in Stat Crunch. You select the variable speed. You want to add the correlation stat, and I typically have the normal quantiles on the y-axis. Click Compute, and there is the, the normal probability plot. Remember, uh, what we're going to do then is compare this correlation stat here to the critical value from the table. So let me drop this in here. So the table will be part of the MyLab exercise. I'm gonna to have to go into MyLab, video resource library, learning tools, formula table card. So there's that table six that we use to compare our correlation stat against. So remember what we do here is we're going to compare our correlation stat of 0.974 to the critical value where our sample size is, is 12. And so you get a critical value of 0.928. So because the correlation statistic of 0.974 is bigger than the critical value of 0.928, pitch speed is approximately uh, normal. And then the other thing we want to do is verify we have no outliers. We do that by drawing a box plot in StatCrunch. So there's my data again, graph, box plot of speed, draw the box, I'm sorry, uh, use fences to identify outliers she needs to be checked and then draw boxes horizontally needs to be checked. And then this is pitch speed in miles per hour of Arietta sliders. And there you have it. The box plot does not show any outliers. So this represents that uh, approach that we called option one, drawing the normal probability plot and drawing the box plot. Option two said that uh, you could simply use the box plot to assess the normality condition because of the robustness of the test. This particular box plot, the, certainly the median is very right of center, which would suggest skewed left, but the whiskers are roughly the same length. And so it's not that skewed. And therefore, we'd be willing to say that a sample size of 12 is large enough to overcome the skewness in the parent population and have X bar B approximately normal. That would be the logic you would follow if you were going through option two. So it's following the whiskers more so then. Well, what we're really doing, you, you want to use both, right? So. Mm -hmm. If, if this left whisker was super long and the right whisker was very, very short, mm -hmm. that would really, really be suggesting highly skewed to the left and you'd probably want a little bit bigger sample size.
Right. But because the whiskers are suggesting pretty uniform or at least symmetric distribution and the, the median and right of center is suggesting slightly skewed to the left, but I don't think it's skewed enough to the left with this box plot to say, oh, it's not, we're, we're not willing to say X bar is approximately normal. Okay. We're always going to be using option one anyhow in our assessment. And so that takes any of the uh, judgment or subjectivity out of, out of the equation. Gotcha. And so now we're being asked to construct a 90% confidence interval for the variable of interest. So there we're going to go stat, T stats, one sample, and we have raw data here, not summarized data. And so that's what we select. So it's stat, T stats, one sample with data. The variable is speed. We're constructing a 90% confidence interval. And so you change the level of confidence to 0 0.90. Hit compute and we get our confidence interval. Okay, so one uses proportion stats, which is where we look for the proportion, and then this one uses the T stats for the mean. That's it. Okay. That's it. And then the interpretation. So here we are 90% confident. The mean pitch speed of a Jake Arrieta slider is between 88.0 Zero. I think this raw data was to the nearest hundredth, right? Yes. And so we're going to take our estimates out to one more decimal place, the nearest thousand. So it's between 88.007 miles per hour and 89.163 miles per hour. And if we wanted a more precise interval, we would have to either lower the level of confidence or increase the, the sample size.